The question is whether we are already in the role of being a fascist state or on the way to becoming a fascist state. Is <laughs> <laughs> And the question is, have we become a fascist state already, or are we in the process of becoming a fascist state? Is that right? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think if you look at the, you know, kind of the hallmarks of what fascism I mean, that's kind of a hard word, I think, for us to grasp because we don't consider ourselves ever to be, you know, susceptible to something like ashes, and that's some, somebody else does. Mm. But if you just go through some of the things that are happening here, uh, incredible government surveillance, militarization of law enforcement activities, uh, lack of privacy, uh, governmental decisions that uh, they're keeping track of all of us and keep permanent track to be used at any time that they want to. These are the hallmarks of a fascist society. I probably found it most descriptive for me to talk about a military industrial congressional media complex and a prison industrial complex um, controlling much of the, um, the decision making in this country and I think certainly when we look at the almost a, like a vacuum-like suction of resources and wealth up to the elite 1%, and then recognize how much that elite has invested in the corporatocracy that promotes warfare, then um, it, it's hard to say that we're uh, protecting ourselves from becoming a fascist state. Um, I think the good news is that Occupy happened. You know, within 12 weeks, that logo, 99 and 1, became globalized all around the world. So there, I think there is the possibility of people um, finding the means to say, we won't put up with this any longer. But um, it, it's also the case that we're dumped down and that we're encouraged to be so enamored with sports and entertainment that we, we might miss our opportunities to really deal with the very real problems we're facing. I would say that um, it's important to uh, inspire and energize young people especially to get involved in making our uh, country more democratic than it is. Um, that things like calling it a fascist state are not particularly helpful in that regard. Um, the gloom and doom that a lot of people uh, might feel inside that uh, environmentally we've gone too far, this planet has no future, that doesn't inspire a lot of people to take action. <laughs> you know, you might think that, but you might want to keep that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Significant other and bad about it. <laughs> uh, I think we really have to um, have an outlook that we still have a lot of uh, democratic freedoms in this country. Uh, the fact that the three of us are up here, having done a lot of what we've done, what we've done and we can still do it, that speaks to white privilege, certainly. Um, but it also speaks to the fact that um, there still is a lot of freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and freedom of assembly in this country. And we have to use it. Um, we are losing it, as Anne talked about, and we can hear from the revelations of people like Edward Snowden. But I'm afraid that a lot of that makes people feel immobilized, paralyzed, afraid to speak out, and doesn't help build the movement. And what we need is to build a larger, more connected, more vibrant movement where young people feel they want to be part of it because they are making significant change in a positive direction.